Book number three. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit spiced up because I have some Lay's, some tapatio, and some lemon. And I put a little bit too much tapatio. And I, I don't be doing the spice. Okay? But this time I did, and it's spicy. And so now I'm ready. So we dropped off where she found out that Gideon was just playing her and playing well she, he was playing her cousin and then he was playing her because it's not an opportunity the oh gosh i forget but the gra great grandfather of whoever uh, told him to do that because women are emotional or something i don't remember but i remember that she was like it meant nothing to you like uh, you know world caving in and he he's like yes but He's like, yes, I don't want to lie, but. So now we're going to see if he's able to say what that but was. Book three, final book. They need to make this into like a movie or like a show or something. Give it something. Give some attention. The attention that it deserves. She does a good job. I like it. It's very, it's not that dark. It's not heavy, you know. I think they should make it into a movie, honestly. Okay, so Kristen Greer, sorry, Kristen Gear, Emerald Green. And don't forget, you can get these books at your library. If they're not at your library, you can order them through the library. They're not yours to keep, but the library will get them for you to read. <clears throat> That's what I do. Yes. Okay, nice. <laughs> for all the girls in the world with the marzipan hearts. And I mean all the girls, because it feels just the same whether you're 14 or 41. That's adorable. Okay, prologue. Oh, it's getting good. July 3rd. Please? Yes, what's up? I've been on the phone for an hour. Can you just sit here for two seconds? Just listen, please? Yes. Okay, so her bestie is trying, her bestie is trying to get her through this. They come to the conclusion that that's what your heart's made of. And then they said, well, if it is, then Gideon took, has bitten off a piece of my heart. And he's nibbled away the chocolate coating around it too. I don't remember that stuff ever having chocolate coating. Uh, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. <clears throat> Simmer is he gave up he's out he's like i cannot do it with you crying he's done so now they're treating gideon like he who must not be named the drama zimmer has actually did a really good job during this time he went out and he was like i'm gonna figure this out with you without you he didn't figure it out but he did find a lot of hidden pathways in in their house in her house her family home <clears throat> and he found a second seller so that's pretty cool Gwen thinks that the butler knows about the hidden pathways because he somehow gets through everywhere like where he needs to be so fast um that sometimes they don't even notice so they don't notice that he's there until it's too late um he sneaks up behind them so she thinks that he already knows and I honestly I think so too I think she's right Zimmer is told her that he found a hollow place where a chest is the only thing is there's brick on it now and it's the middle of the night her brother woke up because he heard noise it's so sweet i love her siblings so much i love the support the unity is beautiful it's beautiful i love it 100 percent and he didn't question who she was talking to she he already knew that it was a ghost of something and he was like let's do it i'm ready i'm awake i'm here what can we do? what are we doing what are we doing so they went downstairs they found the spot there's no loose bricks and the butler found them <laughs> the good thing is he's on their side um very sweet nick the brother he was like why are you gonna help us you're not gonna snitch and he was like, well, I'm really good with a hammer and chisel. And also your grandfather isn't here to help you. So apparently her grandfather 
kept him in the loop. Like he trusted him enough to do that. Um, and he also asked him to put it in the wall for her. So that's pretty exciting. That's pretty sweet. I, I love it. And uh, the only thing is they're missing the key. They're going to chisel it tomorrow. Maybe chapter two. I don't know. But he already told him that he doesn't know where the key is. So I guess that's the next step. Tomorrow, girl, tomorrow she's got to go to school. She might have to do another jump. She has to do a jump every day. So she's going to do a jump. She's going to do a jump. And Gideon's going to be there. Poor thing wasn't even heartbroken over the weekend. It was one night. Ugh. So Leslie is trying to blow off Raphael. Let her go through this. Let her just let her go through this. But she's wearing the necklace that Gwen the necklace. She's wearing the key that Gwen brought from one of her travels. I think that's the key. Cause why not? You know? I think it is. So Leslie, she She's a girl's girl, okay? She is the best. Leslie is key, okay? Key. <laughs> you see what I did there? <clears throat> key because we're looking for the key. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's almost time. <laughs> okay, she's about to get in the car. They're waiting for her outside. Charlotte, I don't know why she keeps going. I mean, I know why she keeps going. But it's so annoying. But it's about to go down. I'm so excited. Ugh. Oh my god. Bro. The audacity. The audacity, bro? He's dumb. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think listen, chapter two? I think you gotta read that. <laughs> He's got the balls to be like, we need to trust each other. We should be friends. Bro! I already know everything. Get out of my face. I swear. I swear, bro, I can see now Gwen going into the future and smacking him on the head. I can see that clearly. I can see that clearly. <laughs> I was surprised she only hit you once. Let's read chapter three. I'm, he's dead to me. So they're going to send her off. It looks like she's going by herself. And they're going to send her off the same date. Just a different time from when she went with her grandfather. So I'm really excited that she gets more time with him because that, like, oh my god, that was such a sweet moment. And I was so sad that his boss came and ruined it. But hopefully they get around too. It's gonna, it's gonna be so sweet. And she also wants to go and see if she can uh, save James, the ghost at the school. So hopefully, hopefully she can do that too because that's uh, it's sad because, like, that's her friend. <laughs> but, like, she wants him to have, like, a longer life. You know what I mean? Like, he's still going to be dead. But, like, maybe he won't be a ghost, you know? Maybe he won't have any unfinished business. <sighs> so she went back. He's like, it didn't work because she, she did it just one minute after she left. Um, but this is why I think it's so sweet because, look. She's so emotional. I'm going to read it to you. My grandfather had died when I was 10 years old, and it was both wonderful and sad to see him again six years after his funeral. Her time. In her going, in her jumping back, he's 32. Um, sad, not because when we met in the past, he wasn't the grandfather I had known, but kind of unfinished version of him but because I was a complete stranger to him. He hadn't the faintest idea how often I had sat on his lap or that when my father died, he was the person who comfort, 
or when my father died, he was the person who comforted me by telling me stories. And we always used to say good night in a secret language of our own invention that no one else understood. He didn't know how much I had loved him and I couldn't tell him. You see what I mean? Ah, uh, you know? She came back, they, well, okay. All right, let me, let me just get it together. So she was with her grandfather. They're in the, they were they went to the chronograph room, the original one, before it was stolen. They put her blood in it, so now the old one only needs Gideon's blood. But nobody else knows except for her and her grandfather so far. She hasn't told Leslie anything yet. And she's trying to get through this as fast as she can. Obviously, they don't have a lot of time, obviously. She did get to meet Aunt Tilly again, and she gave her a cute little crochet pig that was adorable. In my mind's in my mind's eye um it was super sweet and then they didn't uh have a professional take her blood so she did it herself and i think she cut herself a little bit too deeply but we'll, we'll find out she's in there now so the next one she can jump twice if they can get together you know if they can time it right and so she jumped back to her time uh, she was being escorted out and she found out that she was written in um, about her in the logs that they have. They call them the annuals. Gideon steps in. He's like, let me take her back to the limousine. Martin was like, no, this is my job. I have to do this. And he was like, well, you could report me. I'm going to take her. She tried to run to like get away from him. And he's like, I just want to apologize. I'm going to work together now that now what I know. Now from what I know, we need to work together. Lucy and Paul might have been right. And she's like, I don't care. Like, I don't want to talk to you. And her brother's like, fine. He made sure no one used the restroom because that's where the tiles that they have to remove is inside that restroom. So they can get that box. So it is the key. The key that she's wearing around her neck that let that that Leslie's weighing around her Wait. neck that Gwen got when she jumped and she was in the room of the old guy when she was in there by herself. It's oh. that key. Also, somebody murdered her grandfather. They didn't say it, but they said it. We have this much left. Obviously, something's gonna happen. Ugh. So she jumped in her own house, because that's where it was for years, in the little hideaway behind the portrait she jumped through time she's there with her grandfather and they're getting to business um the next jump she's they're hoping they're planning to have it in 1993 at least a year after she was born so it could so he thinks that if if they do this the grandfather thinks that if they do this that he will have more information to give her um and he's going to work really hard to try to get to the top of that pyramid at that uh, lodge, at that, um, I don't know what they're called, group? I don't know. After this jump, after she's done any, and he had sandwiches ready for her. Oh, he's the best. Um, but after this jump, she has tomorrow where she's going to go to school and she's going to jump. And I think, I don't know yet, but I think Gideon's going to jump with her this time. We'll see. This might be where in the first book where she saw her kiss somebody. This might be it. This could be the that time. So right now she's angry and she doesn't remember, but I remember. It's supposed to be at a ball, so I, I'm that's what I'm thinking. And then on the weekend they have that party. I don't know if they're gonna actually do anything with that. So she went back, she came back from time. Charlotte was waiting outside her room and she threatened Gwen, her cousin. She was like, if you don't give me what's under your arm, I already heard a little bit because she was trying to eavesdrop and she's like, I couldn't hear a lot, but I know you're doing something. And they are doing something, but it's a good thing she doesn't know everything. But she's a snitch. <sighs> and she can't, honest, I don't know what she's gonna do with the chronograph because she wanted to put it under her bed and she, everybody's gonna find it there everybody's gonna find it there so she can't put it there she has to i don't know man she's gotta take it with her somewhere maybe give it to leslie but leslie everybody knows 
Leslie is going to be her option because she's she had the files already, you know? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So it's morning and Charlotte says that she's sick. <sighs> and Mr. Bernard is like, oh yeah, I'll make sure she's not in the room. But oh no, they're sending him off to pick up the costume for the party. So now he can't stay there. And she can't stay there because nobody believes her when she said she was sick. <sighs> so she's stressed. I'm stressed. Simmer is, poor baby, he's stressed. She decided to go to Starbucks. <laughs> she needs a little pick-me-up. You know, sometimes you need a little bit of some. You need a little some. Okay. So Raphael comes up behind her and the barista was flirting with her and he's like she got a boyfriend her his brother you know and she's like no i don't no i don't obviously not like that <laughs> but he's trying to ask her to see if leslie will be jealous if he like says he's gonna go out with somebody else and she's like yeah i'm not doing that and then he's like but do you think she'd be jealous? <laughs> so then she's like, okay, fine. I'll help you out. But like, not like that. <laughs> she's trying to tell the guardians <laughs> that she's sick. Everybody's all upset. And they're like, well, you can't blame me. It's probably, I, I probably got it from Charlotte. <laughs> the Lord was on her side. Because the doctor, <clears throat> you know that little ghost? Because the doctor was like, let me see. And he's like, oh yeah, you, ha you have a temperature. No, she doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> but I don't know why he's doing it. I don't know if Gideon talked to him before, but Gideon's in the corner smiling. So they're going to let her skip this one. <laughs> they're there so mad. <sighs> Aunt Maddie saved the day. Honestly, she can't, She comes back from her trip. <clears throat> She's back home. Charlotte tried to sneak in her room. Aunt Maddie posted herself on her bed and cleaned up her room for her. Very sweet. Love her so much. Love her. Love her, love her, love her, love her. And she wouldn't let anybody in. And her brother Nick, when he got back from school, so they switched spots and he helped her to go to the bathroom. And poor... The poor butler still hasn't gotten back from his errands, but her room's clean. The chronograph, original one, is safe, and Charlotte didn't see nothing. So, Aunt Maddie, she's what's up. Gwen asked her if anybody was in her room in 1993, because she still has to go see her grandfather. And she says that it was guest rooms, and they didn't have anybody at the time there, so hopefully... Cause they don't, they don't, this is from memory. Okay. They don't, they didn't think to write this down cause they didn't know that they had to write it down. Not like the people, you know, what are they called again? You know what I'm talking about. We're in the third book. You know what we're talking about. Got myself a little ice cream. So the grandpa, he put everything he learned in the past 30, whatever years into Anna Corinne. Or Anna Karenin? No? Something like that? You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That was good. And he was like, he's like, I'm so sorry I'm not going to be there for you during your time. It was so sad. Okay, let's not talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm going to be sad. But, um, so sweet. The first couple of pages, like 200 pages, is the book. And the last 200 pages is the book. And then somewhere in the middle, he put a little bit on some. But the rest of it is just everything he found out. He's the best. I love him so much. And he always has sandwiches for her. So sweet. Grandpa's goals. I really like the raspberry and the lemon together. My favorite. Charlotte has had enough. <laughs> She told, and Mr. Marley came over to the house, barged into Gwen's room, and poor 
Aunt Maddie tried to get them out. She was so mad. She was like, where's the chest, Gwen? Anyways, so they were looking around, found it, got it, asked for the key, which she doesn't have. Leslie has it. And took it. <clears throat> and they're like, oh, so disappointed in you. And Gwen just stayed in her bed because she's sick. Uh, and then Zimris, poor, poor baby. I don't even remember what he said. But Aunt Maddie was also freaking out. She was like, oh no, they're going to find out. We did all this work. And she's like, nah, I put my collection of Jane Austen books in there. I moved it, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited for them to open that. So Gwen asked Madame Rossini to if they had anything in green for the party she is so sweet you know i love her i love madame rosini and she's like green she has lots of stuff in green because they used to always use green because her cousin is a redhead and she's like a combination and she's a professional she knows how to match how to make it look good but I'm so excited for her outfit for when she goes to the party. I'm so excited. Also, Hot Cheetos, they changed their back and I do not appreciate that. Okay, I like it when it stays the same. But it's still good. Um, she just finished getting her dress and she was like, you're going to be the most beautiful one in the bob. And then Gwen said, is thinking. Not that she would ever know because of course she wouldn't be there. I smiled at her. You're so sweet to me. You're the nicest of them all. And you deserve an Oscar for your costume. I know, said Madame Rosini modestly. She's so cute. I love her so much. Charlotte is still looking for whatever was supposed to be in the box. We, you and me, we know. Charlotte don't know. But she's being persistent. <clears throat> they didn't find anything but books in the box because Gwen switched it out. But Leslie, Gwen's bestie, got her backpack stolen out of nowhere. And it's Charlotte who did it, or the, you know, the group. Because the guardians, you know, the guardians. Because there was a lady with an Hermes bag right next to her. If they wanted to steal something valuable, they would have gone for that. Obviously. And I knew they were going to come after Leslie, but I'm really happy they didn't hurt her because I would have been upset. So she runs right into a room where Rakowski was drinking away and Gideon had to come in and save her. Although, she did try to save herself, okay? She's a, she wasn't just a damsel. I was right. <laughs> it is the part where she goes back and now she's there. I was right. Look, let me read it to you. Gideon says, you don't have to, you don't have to like the count. You only have to respect him. No, I don't. Says who? I snorted angrily. I don't have to do anything. I said and abruptly turned toward the window and there I saw myself in my school uniform peeing out from behind the curtain with a rather foolish expression on my face. Good heavens. That was why the room looked so familiar to me. It was Mrs. Counter's classroom, and the Gwyneth behind the curtain had just traveled to the past for the third time. I made a sign with my hand for her to hide again. Remember? Remember? I remember. What I did next has to be put down to post-traumatic shock again, like the baker and the blood in his cinnamon croissants. In the normal way, I'd never have done such a thing, but also, I thought I'd seen something green scurry past the doorway. You know, the other lady. And, well, fundamentally, fundamentally, I did it only because I already knew I was going to do it. You might say there was nothing else that I could do. Maybe. The lady that was grabbing onto Gideon was a distraction. She was in on it, and they found out who else was the traitor. We'll see if Gideon can do anything, but if not, they're gonna die. She was bleeding a lot and a lot of blood, at least the way I was seeing it. And right now, the doc, they finally jumped back. She was able to jump back even though she was dying. 
And he's saying it's a superficial cut. And he was holding the wound. But there's too much blood. It's starting to like hear things and um, hopefully she, I don't think she's going to die anymore. I mean, I think, you know, she did a little bit and came back. But dinner time, there was a huge argument about the party and friends and uh, Charlotte and her mom, I swear, I know their family, but they're killing me. Sister Caroline goes and see who's the, who it is and says Gollum is at the door for Gwen. Charlotte says, oh, it's probably Gordon. I'm helping him with an essay. And the mom starts talking about his family's like this tycoon, like, you know, like putting up airs and that it must be for her, not Gwen. So she goes, sees Gordon. And then comes back with Gideon, who's there saying he's there to see Gwen. Charlotte's mortified. I'm loving it. Zimris is laughing, swinging from the chandelier. It's a good time. So now Zimris is narrating everything. He's so cute. I love him. So uh, Gwen asked to excuse herself. They said yes. They're going to save a piece of chocolate cake for her. And then, rather awkwardly, I went toward Gideon, Zimmerus, and there was death silence in the room. He whispered from the chandelier. All eyes rested on the girl in the piss yellow blouse. <laughs> and then Gwen is thinking, he's right. <laughs> I, was cr I was cross with myself for not show showering and changing quickly when I came in. The stupid school uniform was about the least attractive outfit I had. But who could have guessed I'd have a visitor this evening and one that I wanted to look good for? Hi, said Gideon, smiling for the first time since he'd come into the room. I smiled shyly back. Hi, Gollum. Gideon's smile widened. Simmerus again. Even the shadows on the walls were silent, while the two of them looked at each other as if they'd just sat on a whoopee cushion said Simris, coming down from the chandelier and flying after us. Romantic violin music began to play as the girl in the pissed yellow blouse and the boy who badly needed a haircut walked out of the room side by side. He was still flying b along behind us, but when we reached the stairs, he turned left. The clever and handsome demon Simris would have followed them to play Gooseberry, if he hadn't had to satisfy his appetite after seeing so many emotions on display. Today, he was finally going to eat the ghost of the fat clarinet player who haunted number 23, the murdered, and murdered the music of Glenn Miller all, all day. He waved and then disappeared through the window of the corridor. What a sweetie, giving them privacy. And he's hilarious, I love him. Gideon is finally telling her that he read all the papers. He's happy she's alive, but um, they, the papers say that if the Philosopher's Stone is to take full effect, someone must die. And that someone is you. So she now knows that she's the price that has to be paid. They end up kissing and then her phone rings. And it's Leslie. <laughs> and she's like, Leslie, this is not a good time, girl. This is not a good time. And Leslie's like, it, I know it's not a good time. So I'm calling you to let you know, me, your siblings, your mother, your grandmother are all coming upstairs. We're almost at your door. <laughs> and she says that her sister barges in. Thank God they're not kissing anymore. And she's like, see, told you they're not necking. Apparently that means kissing or making out or whatever. And she has cake. So he didn't get caught, which is great. Um, Cause who knows if he, if he would have been allowed to uh, go up the room by her. By so we moved locations because uh, I have the car today. I don't think the other car's gonna get fixed. Anyways, that's a different thing. Chapter 11, all her favorite people were in a room having a little d dessert picnic. Leslie is the only one at the room right now, other than Gwen and Gideon. I love that they're both GG. You know, that's pretty cute. Everybody else left after a good time, 
and now they're going to pull all the information together and see what they can figure out. So Leslie is now telling them that once the ruby goes, um, only one person will get, gain immortality. And that's why um, that old man, why the count is is so adamant about like telling people that it's gonna help through the humankind because it's the only way for them to actually fight for his cause and like murder people and be willing um to put all this work and money into it tim trying to gain immortality honestly i think she's spot on because like he kind of sucks but i think i also think the count gwen and one more uh guardian one more time traveler had actual powers i don't know if gideon is one of them that had powers or maybe they just because i know that gwen's aunt can see the future so it's scattered in the family but only a couple of them can jump in time i'm losing track of what i'm saying <laughs> but I, you know what i'm saying right okay <laughs> so they're getting ready for the party leslie convinced um gideon to bring her brother Raphael and Gwen convinced Leslie to not wear the garbage sacks so now Madame Rosini is gonna get them dresses for both the girls and she, bo both of them are super excited both of them I'm excited uh, everybody's excited she's going to do another jump for the day a jump for the day just a regular one not a mission and they asked to see her mom. So both of them are going. Her mom's changed three times. We already don't like him. The Falk guy, okay? We don't like him. But she's changed three times, so clearly she still has something. They get there, oh my gosh. They get there, they split him up, Gwen is supposed to go to the cellar. Mom goes somewhere else. I did tell you that um, Gwen and Gideon are together, right? I told you that, right? I think I told you that, right? Me, and he's like being all lovey-dovey. And she's like, oh no, I forgot the book. She's trying to catch him up on everything. She thinks the book's in her mom's bag. So she goes upstairs where she thinks her mother is. And she sees her mom surrounded by the other guardians. And they're interrogating her because they found the midwife. So she finds out she was given up two days after she was born to her mother because Lucy can't take her with them. They don't want to raise her in that time and be like stuck as outlaws. So her mom raised her, her aunt, but her mom. And she runs off crying. Gideon's trying to calm her down. He wasn't supposed to jump with her. He was supposed to do an actual mission. But he ends up jumping with her, gets in trouble. They both kind of get in trouble. It's a mess of obviously. And then when she jumps back, her mom and her have a little talk and like they're crying. I was crying, everybody was crying. Um, they're good. What's a little weird, we're almost at the end. It's a little weird that Gideon, I feel like he's not saying something. Morning after, Leslie, Gideon, Gwen, Raphael went to this train station and they're jumping using the original chronograph. They're running through some hallways after they jumped. I think, I don't know. <laughs> And if he betrays her, I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be so, so sad. We're going to find out. But she still hasn't gotten to the part where she goes and she hits him in the head. So this could be it. This could be her hitting him on the head in the past. She just saw past Gideon and he finished giving the note where he had to give the note. What happened was she didn't think to hit him right away. So she was like, give me a second because future Gideon is giving me signals behind this pillar, whatever. Then future Gideon stuck his hand out, smacked himself on the head. And she was like, 
you were so mean to me and it was you. You literally hit yourself and you were so mean to me. And he was like, yeah, I'm sorry about that. So they were able to get the note. Now they jumped back to their time. And Leslie is helping Gwyneth change clothes. Because they're going to do another jump. It's getting very complicated. <laughs> but she's going to meet the Count the same day that she first met him. I'm very nervous. And apparently Gideon was just nervous. So apparently he's not hiding anything. I mean, we could still be, but I don't know. He says he was just nervous. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, so remember how Gwyneth at the ball in the in the um, school before she died, before she was stabbed to death, but then came back to life? She told James, because he's a ghost in her time, to meet her out in the park. So they're doing a jump just to meet him and give him a vaccination. Breaking the rules, but it's so sweet. Okay, this is what I think is going to happen. Because now they're passing again like they're supposed to. I'm to right in front of the Count and his goon. The Count asked Gideon if he followed instructions to the letter. He said yes. So now I'm thinking Gideon is pretending to do what the Count wants. Somehow Paul and Lucy are going to help him kill the Count to keep Gwen safe. I don't know how that's gonna happen because the goons are still around, but I I think that's what's gonna happen. I hope so. Listen, this is why I think what I think. If the Gideon says, if the clock on the wall there is telling the right time, then in a few minutes I'll be traveling back to the year 2011 and everything is prepared there for me to go to visit Lucy and Paul. Exactly, said the Count, pleased. He took an envelope from his coat pocket and gave it to Gideon. My outline of the plan is in here. I don't want any of the guardians in the future even to think of interfering with your movements. You see what I mean? You see what I'm saying? So the Count is telling Gideon that his task, Gwen is going to stay with the Count. But Gideon has to jump sometime and blackmail Paul and Lucy and tell them that if they don't give the blood, something's going to happen to Gwen. He's supposed to put in the remaining drops into the chronograph, the new chronograph, and then bring him back whatever elixir comes out of it. He doesn't know exactly yet. The Count doesn't know. We already know. We know. The Count doesn't know. Gideon is telling the Count, wouldn't it be better if we brought the elixir to our time? Why do we have to bring it back to you? And he's like, trust me. The Count says, trust me. Just bring it back to this time and I'll explain everything. What if he kills her when he's gone? Because he doesn't technically need her. You know what I mean? I think that Gideon should put like rat poison or something in in the bottle and then have give that to the count. Cause like he doesn't know what's in there. He's never closed it before. Lucy and Paul are discussing. They think that what if the count already took the elixir? What if Whoever is working for the Count, their time, is actually the Count. Because he took the elixir, he's immortal, and he's been in the inner circle for years now. You know what I mean? And he's just making sure that he stays alive. That's what they're thinking. And that's not bad. It when it is with the Count by herself, she sits down and she drinks the tea. And it was poisoned so annoying bro how many movies do you watch you need you never eat their food like the fae come on people oh my god it's mr whitman so gwyneth didn't die i don't know if it's being the raven and that's what made her die or they prepared i don't know but she didn't die she's waking up she's hearing the Count say, oh, I had to go somewhere and they did surgery on me and now I don't look like myself, like my portrait or whatever. And Robert, the ghost, the little ghost boy, is like super upset because somebody killed his dad. Mr. Whitman. It's Mr. Whitman. I didn't even see it coming, bro. I, I didn't even see that coming. Come on. 
Mr. Whitman slash the count super upset that he had to be a teacher for so long. Do you, you remember Mr. Whitman, the one that everybody was gaga's over? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. For a second, I was like, he he had a ring. I remember he had a ring, but everybody in the in the group had a ring. But he's telling her to take cyanide pills, or else he's gonna shoot Gideon when he jumps back. I don't think Jim Gideon is jumping back by himself. I think he's gonna jump back with Lucy and Paul. Doctor White might not be dead, so that's exciting. Robert was really sad. I mean, but then maybe they'd be a ghost and they'd be together. I don't know. And no one can help her because look what I just found out. Zimmerus flew in. Because everybody else is useless. I love him so much. He's so great. But listen. She, she asked Zimmerus, where the hell are the guardians? Not stopping to bother that the Count could hear me. But he seemed to think the question was meant for him. They can't help you now, he said. I'm afraid he's right. Simris was flapping his wings frantically. When Gideon got back before those idiots closed the circle of blood, and then Mr. Male Model here took that useless fool Marley hostage and forced the Gideon, the guardians, into the chronograph room at pistol point. They're locked in there now, turning the air blue with their language. Everybody's pissed. The Count shook his head. No, that was throwing no life for me, and it must come to an end. What can little, what can a little girl like you offer the world? I, on the other hand, I, on the other hand, still have many plans, great plans. Distract his attention, cried Zimris. Just distract his attention. Never mind how. You see how good it's getting. You see how good. Also, oh, well, let me hold that to myself until the end, cause you girl, girl. You're going to be excited. Okay, I was wrong. So, Lucy and Paul didn't come with Gideon. Gideon came by himself. And Mr. Whitman shot him. Mr. Mr. Whitman slashed the cow. Shot him multiple times. And he's sunk in his own blood. The count is a little hysterical. And he's like, if you don't take this cyanide... I'm going to kill your siblings and your friends and your mom and whoever because she didn't take it. She she believes Simris. You know, Simris told her that there was a plan. There's just hold off as long as you can. And she believed him. And now she's crying because Gideon's dying. Well, Dr. White woke up from whatever happened to him and he smacked Mr. Whitman slash the count on the head. And he got knocked out. And then Dr. White, that's the only strength he had. And he fainted. Or I don't know what happened. He is on the floor again. Gideon started waking up. And apparently, what he did was take the... He took the powder. They put it in some water and he drank it. So now he's immortal. And Gwen's immortal. So, she's not going to be alone. They tied up the Count slash Mr. whatever. You know what I'm saying. So, they tied him up. They got everybody free. And the Gwen is now going back to school. So Leslie and Fael are now officially dating. The ghost that that other person had, they was like, you demon, I'm going to kill you. My family name you know found her and he was like i've been searching for centuries not giving up although i feel like if i was him if i was that ghost i would have just kept with the family line and probably found her that way i don't know but he is very upset zimmerus <laughs> he's like she's not a demon that sword's not gonna do anything i'm a demon try it on me and he's really confused he's telling leslie he's never gonna leave her side it doesn't matter that he can't kill her he's gonna torment her zimmer is like can i please eat him so she said how can i say no how can i say no to that face so he's gone the last chapter lucy and paul are gonna have a baby remember the old chronograph was the one that lucy and paul stole they jumped to the past Mr. Bernard helped Gwen find the chronograph. He's the butler that they've had for years. Like they get a chance to 
have a family with little baby Bernard. I'm sure that Gwen, you know, is gonna love him. He'll be able to tell him, I finally know. He probably has known his whole life that, you know, sometime in the future, his sister, his older sister is gonna be there. She's gonna be younger than him. The part that I was excited to tell you was that um, I think they did make it into a movie or a series or something. And so I'm going to look that up to watch it. Hopefully they did all three books. Oh my gosh. See it coming. I didn't think it was Mr. Women. Like at all. And Mr. Bernard is a baby brother. <laughs> they just treat him like a butler that's been there forever. Isn't that sad? Like, I understand how the Guardians, like, that's family members that were working for family. But, like, that's different because everybody knew about them. You know what I mean? Like, everybody knew, oh, so-and-so from, from our family can time travel. Or we're going to work for the time-traveling cousins. Like, they... They're not hidden, and Bernard feels like he's hidden. Now that the organization doesn't have anything to do, I don't know what they're going to do. Does he get to stop working for them? I don't even remember if they said in the books why he started working for them. Probably the best thing that Lucy and Paul could think of to like keep him around. Highly recommend.